It looks like it's fixed, baby. Let's see. Come on, please tell me it's fixed. Uh, Zeb's Dirt and Demo, thank you for joining. I'll give it a few minutes. Looks like everyone's joining again. All things earth moving. Can you see and hear me loud and clear? Thank you for joining. Um, I restarted my phone and for some reason it works now. I don't know. Bloody technology, I tell you. Uh, where else have we got? TikTok. What have we got? A couple of viewers. Let's go, guys. Come on. Why is that uh, also pausing? I don't know, man. This technology is crap. All right, guys. Thanks for joining. Ah, here we go. Ah, I was just listening to my la to the last pod. Thanks, Zebs. Thank you. Is that the the last the last live session? The one I just put up. All right. So I'll just wait for. I'll give it another minute or so, um, and then we'll see how how many people join. And once again, I can't see the time on here, which. I really hate because I can't tell how long I'm going for. Actually, I've got it here. Five o'clock. We've got another two minutes. All right. I'll give it another couple of minutes. Thanks for joining, guys. I'm going to kick off another weekly session in a minute. So uh, grab your drinks. We'll be here for another hour. I've got mine. Let's kick back on a Sunday afternoon and just talk. It's a good time to relax after a hard week and after a, a bit of a weekend, short break, we can actually um, start getting back into business. Tristan is asking a question. We've got questions so quick. Uh, just wondering if a Komatsu P55 is a good machine to start a business with. You know what, Tristan, good thing that you asked that. Before I start my session, I just uh, did a test run. If you go to one of my YouTube videos, you'll see... I did a comparison between the Komatsu PC55 and my Kubota U55. Komatsu, great machine. I think the, P the PC55 is fantastic if you intend to do um, a lot of work sitting in that seat. Very comfortable machine. Um, it, it's, sort of, it's a little bit sort of slower and smoother than the Kubota, which I find is good if you're going to be in there all day. So um, it won't sort of, you won't get like back pain and stuff like that and bounce around and things. So, and it had nice smooth digging and stuff. And uh, apparently you can adjust hydraulics if you want it to be um, uh, a little bit quicker or something. Someone told me that. So yeah, if you uh, are considering a Komatsu PC55, I think overall uh, it's a good machine in my opinion. Um, so yeah, no, if you've, if you've got your eyes set on one, just do it, man. All right, so I'm going to start in a minute. Just have one more sip before we start. Hopefully I answered your question there, Tristan. All right, if everybody can hear me, I'm going to make a start. Hello and welcome to another one of my live sessions, guys. So these are my weekly lives where on a Sunday afternoon, um, when we're all starting to get ready for another w week of work, we can talk a little bit of uh, earthwork stuff and and kick off a new week. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ivan Olovic. I also have a, an excavation business called Eagle One Industries. So I do have my own little business and we do all sorts of uh, excavation work. Um, I have been streamlining it. So I have actually really, really compacted my business down to only like very, very minimal machines. Um, I don't have workers anymore. And that's also why I'm able to concentrate a bit more on this Earthworks Hub stuff. So Earthworks Hub, basically, it's a podcast channel. So you've got myself talking to different people in the industry, trying to find out what everyone else is doing, sharing their learning, sharing their journeys, so that we can all learn from that and help each other. On the other note, I've got my website there, which is earthworkshub.com.au. And that is a business directory as well. So for anyone that um, is in the earthworks industry, make sure that you list your business on that website so we can all f see your business and use your services. So it doesn't matter what you do in the earthworks industry, um, make sure you list your business on the website, earthworkshub.com.au. If you go on the website, you will see a number of sponsors. So I've got a couple of really good sponsors now. One of them is Melbourne Tractors. 
as you can see by the Cabelco hat. They're a Cabelco dealer. Um, but the other sponsors are, and I've got to give a big shout out to them, is Network Finance, Next Gen Landscapes and Earthworks, The Bolle Group, Melbourne Tractors, obviously, and JR Safety Co. So uh, thank you to all my sponsors. Um, your sponsorship really means a lot to me, like I was saying in a few other podcasts. Sponsorships will help me keep all my equipment, such as these microphones, audio interfaces, cameras, everything will keep me up to date so I can create better content and give you guys what you want. So thank you very much for um, all my sponsors. Um, what I wanted to say is, so you've probably noticed that I posted today um, last week or the week before, sorry, I didn't post, I didn't do a live last week, but um, the week before I did, a, did a, a live and actually recorded it. So what I'm going to do now is, apart from doing you know, podcasts and, and talking to individuals, I'm going to actually also post these weekly lives. So anyone that uh, can't be here for one of the lives or missed one of the past ones or heard something and want to go back, you can actually go back and listen to them now. So I'm going to put in um, a weekly live on all my Spotify, Apple Podcasts and YouTube. So make sure, yeah, if you do, if you do, or if you need to leave early and you can't be here for the whole session, um, just yeah, you can you can go back and listen to them. So make sure you tune into those. So today's session will also be recorded and I'll be posting it up. Um, so like I said, I didn't get a chance to do a live last week, and that was because I was at Diesel Dirt and Turf. So I'll be getting into that in a moment. That was a massive, massive weekend. Really exciting met a lot of people, but I'll, I'll get into that in a sec. Um, I'll do a couple of quick updates on myself. I'll talk about a few topics again, and then I'll open it up to you guys. So thanks for listening. Thanks for, to everyone for joining. All right, so a bit of an update. So Diesel Dirt and Turf, I ended up driving there in my ute. So I'm not sure if everyone remembers, but my ute actually broke down a few weeks back. Um, the timing belt snapped on the old Mitsubishi Triton and it resulted in bent valves and all sorts of stuff in the head and just a whole bunch of other dramas. Wasn't sure what to do, whether it was worth fixing it or trying to sell it, getting a secondhand motor. I had all these different options and thanks to you guys, everybody was chipping in and giving me advice. Um, so once again, thank you for that. Um, that is all fixed. I ended up just getting a, a brand new head from eBay and my mechanic put it all together, put a couple of other new parts on there. And the good thing is it drove me to Sydney and back. So obviously it works. Everything's fine. So thank you to my mechanic for that. Thanks for joining us. So uh, on Insta, we've got Platinum Training, Rural Vegetation, um, AXM. We've got Ground Level Media. Thanks for joining. Shotgun Mechanical on the uh, on TikTok, so I've got a couple of things going at once here on TikTok. Thank you to Clayton, Notorious, Caleb, Marshall, everybody else. Wilson Civil, thank you guys for joining. So yeah, the U is all up and running. It got me to Diesel Dirt and Turf in Sydney and back, so I'm very, very happy with that. Um, and I'll probably be stuck with that U for another 10 years now. Uh, Project Spalding, so the factory that I'm building, that is still moving along nicely. All the wall panels are almost complete. Um, I think there's a couple of panels to get finished and then um, I'm told that they're going to start lifting up the panels. So the walls are going to go up in the next week or two, probably two weeks I'd say. Um, the walls will start going up, then the steel guys are going to start putting up all the uh, purlins and that and joining all the panels and getting the roof ready and then I'll have to get the roofer in. So um, yeah, Project Spalding moving along nicely. Um, and like I said, I didn't do a live last week. So the main reason is I was at Diesel Dirt and Turf. I was going to do a live from the hotel, but the reception was so bad that it couldn't even do a live. I actually tried to do a live from Diesel Dirt and Turf and couldn't get reception. It just wasn't working. So um, I gave up on that idea and just tried to do as many um, posts when I got back. So hopefully you guys are watching all those posts. Um, I've still got a lot more to go. I met a lot of people at Diesel Dirt and Turf. Uh, it was my first expo that I went to um, as Earthworks Hub, I suppose. And I really, really wanted to see what it was like. And I really wanted to meet a lot of people face to face. So a lot of guys I've spoken to, you know, either through my socials or emails or on the phone. But this was actually a good chance to see a lot of people face to face. And um, 
I think it was a, a really good success. Overall, um, Diesel Dern Turf, one, wonderful, wonderful event. Um, my hat goes off to the organisers. I mean, to organise so many stalls and so many, um, uh, what do you call it? So just so many things going on at once. For them to be able to organise all that, that's uh, that. My hat goes off to you. That's it's a big task. And um, overall, the show I think went really, really well. Even all the parking and that they had a lot of uh, traffic controllers there, and they really controlled it well. So no, really, really, really good. Perfect weather for anyone that was there. Um, we had 26, 27 every day. Beautiful, beautiful weather. I think I actually got a bit of heat stroke on the second day. Uh, thank you for the likes, guys. Yeah, I think I got a bit of heat stroke, but um, it was really good. Really, really good weather. Uh, thanks for joining us. We've got Stevenson bricklaying. Uh, we've got Harrison. Who else? We've got Mons, Matt MC, Tristan. Thank you very much for the likes and for joining. So, um, yeah, no, Diesel Dern Turf, great weather in Sydney. Uh, apparently the week before they had shocking weather. They had rain and um, it washed everything out. So lucky lucky we didn't have that. Um yeah, we, I actually went on my own, so I sort of um, was hoping that I'd meet a lot of people there, and I did. It worked out really, really well. Um, I really, really want to say thank you to the Digger Lead boys. So uh, Joel and Luke, I got to meet them um, face-to-face, and I actually spent a lot of time at their stand. So thank you for, for letting me uh, hang around there. Um, and also to the Kajo gang. So um, if anyone hasn't seen my videos on um, the Kajo Grease system, I really reckon you should check it out. I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, it's it's basically, you can use your old grease guns, so whether they're the old mechanical style or the new cordless, you can just put a little adapter into the cordless one and you can um, use these grease guns, the grease tubes that don't actually need the plunger. They just, they just sort of self like an old silicon gun or whatever you call it, you can see the, the internal moving in inwards and suction. It, it's it's done by suction, basically, yeah. So um, I think the Kajo system is a really, really good greasing system. No waste, no mess. They screw in. Don't have to peel off the lids and get grease everywhere. So a fantastic idea. Check check it out anyway. But um, thank you to the Digger Lid boys for letting me hang around there. Um what else was I going to say? So, um, yeah, they were really, really long days. I um, spent from the time it opened, from whatever it was, 9.30 till 5 every day there, and walked around, met heaps of heaps of stalls. So I didn't get to every single stall, but I'll tell you what, I reckon I got to 80% um, and got to say hello to a lot of people, and a lot of people were happy for me to do little, um, you know, 20-second videos on, on their products. And it was good. It was a good learning experience to see, to learn and see what new products are out there and what new services. So yeah, thanks for joining me, Penny, Bevo, Christy. We've got a few people here, Chriso. We've got Tinks. All right. So um, some of the bigger things at the event as well. West Track, they unveiled the Cat Two Five Five. So I did a little video on that. I was very happy to be there. Apparently, that was the only one in Australia. Uh, West Track had their hands on it and um, unveiled it there. Fantastic looking machine. So I didn't see it like in action or I didn't see it uh, turn on or whatever, but just looking at that 255, which is basically the new version of the 259, it looks really, really tough and looks like it's uh, a good working machine. So some of the big changes on that to, from the 259 is there's a ram now that pushes the arm upwards rather than sideways. Um, they've got a, a really, really thick arm on it now. So I just hope that that thick arm doesn't actually block the, the viewing of the bottom of the bucket now. So that's one thing that I loved about the old cats, that you could actually see the bottom and the back of your bucket. I just hope that thicker arm hasn't, hasn't changed that. So I couldn't tell because of the way we're sitting in it. But... Um, I'm sure one day I'll get a seat in one and actually get tested out properly. Um, they got a they got a single track system now, so not a two piece, just a single piece track system. So no more cracking of that little extended torsion piece. Um, what else is there? Some different power. Uh, basically, you can just upgrade the um, flow just through software, so you can make it a high high uh, high flow machine just through some software changes. Um, 
the inside looks nice, very, very comfortable. So I think there's, there's a few changes in there, probably more than I can probably mention, I suppose, but um, I'd be really, really keen to go and sit in one and actually see what it feels like. And I'd be really keen to sit, actually uh, see it up close um, without so many people. There's a lot of people floating around. I couldn't, couldn't get too close to it. I got a seat in it, but it was only like two seconds. Um, so yeah, the Cat 255 unveiling, that was one of the biggest features. I couldn't wait to see that. I got to meet Ash, so Ashton Laverington, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, from Komatsu. He got he let me sit in one of the PC 138s, uh, so the 13 ton Komatsu. I got a seat in that, and they had he showed me the RFK, so Retrofit Kit, which is their guidance um, system, and also has a payload meter on it. So as you're loading trucks, you can monitor that, and you can see how much you've put in. Because I know a lot of us that load trucks find it hard, you know, quickly riding, riding down each rego, each truck, each is. You can have that all tracked now. You can do a payload meter and actually tell you how many tons or whatever you've put into each truck. So it's a really good system. Retrofit, so you can move it around between machines, which is good. Thanks for joining. What have we got? Waycardo Digger, Rado, J Rod, Josh Weaver. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so that was really good to meet Ash there. I also got to use the, um, what was it? It was a Bobcat Positrack from the digger stand and they had their new digging bucket on there. So they had a new uh, foin one that they've changed a few things on. And um, I'll tell you what, it was interesting. It was, it was an odd looking bucket, but it actually worked really well. So I got to have a bit of a go in that. I had a go on a, a simulator. Nicola, thanks for joining. Yeah, I got to go on a simulator from uh, the the Dival boys. So Dival, Earth Moving, and Civil. They um, what they have is they're like a simulator that they take around to schools and to other events. And on that simulator, you can actually be either in a, a um, an excavator. I think it was a dozer. Um, a couple of other things. They also have a, a truck simulator, so you can simulate driving a truck. And um, they use that to sort of stimulate some interest in the young people to get in the industry and get a feel for using machinery in that. So I think it's a fantastic idea. I met all the um, the guys from Dival and had a bit of a go on there and fantastic group of guys, especially Andy as well, the owner. So um, cheers to Andy for having a bit of a chat with me. Uh, maybe we can do some more together. And they're from the Goulburn Valley. So yeah, Dival, very nice guys to meet and that simulator is an awesome system. Thanks for joining Dave as well. All right, and Vicster. All right, what else have we got? So the unveiling, West Track. I got to um, meet a lot of other people. If I miss out on some, I apologize, but I did have a, uh, a good catch up with the Elite uh, Attachments Group. I had a go on the EI Engineering um, little uh, 1.8 tonner, I think they had, and they had their new little uh, quick um, hitch system on there which is a single lock system which meets all standards elite does a little single lock system as well now um, which means that your unhitching and hitching of buckets will be a lot quicker so keep an eye out for those um, who else did I see I saw earth moving warehouse which I, I had on here earlier I saw them join us um, what else was there we saw oh, heaps of people I saw Dean trailers I hope you guys saw that Dean trailers has a have, have some trailers that attach to your vehicle so that you can actually drag them along with your ute and they're like a little tilting um, tipper trailer. So you can actually load them up with soil or material. Um, I think you can put like 2.2 ton of material on there. You can tip it off, come back, put your machine on there, 1.8 ton or whatever. Um, some really, really good ideas I saw that I saw floating around there. Got to see some of the eng... I don't even know how to say it. How do you say it? Is it Encon? Engcon? Anyway, I saw I saw their their little um, rotating um, hitches and steel wrist was there as well. So it was very, very uh, interesting to see those things in action in real life. So um, I reckon that is the way of the future. Um, they did some they did some demos there laying pipes with the steel wrist um, rot rotating hitches that looked like it made life so much easier. They dug with the same bucket 
grabbed grabbed um dug with a bucket grabbed with the grab attachments just grabbed um pipes put them in the ground just twisted them around whichever way they wanted put put one pipe into another it just made life uh, look like it'd be so much easier using that system um what else so was anybody else here at diesel dirt and turf if anyone wants you can make some comments i'm happy to to um, read them out thanks for joining we've got foster earth moving x corp we've got kenny thanks for joining dave as well um yeah what i was just, what i was going to say is there was um what else was there a couple of interesting things i saw concrete taxi were there um a couple of guys were asking how that actually works so these guys do little small batch deliveries of concrete so they'll bring you a little truck with concrete bags in there and a mixer incorporated into the truck so you can mix as you need dirt pirate thanks for joining yeah so that concrete taxi apparently works in just small batch stuff so some some guys after i posted that were asking um for con concrete taxi in particular they were asking why wouldn't you just order a, a small concrete truck to turn up but i think what they mean with these concrete concrete taxis you can have the little truck sitting there and just just mix concrete as you need it so basically if you're working on a little residential house and you're doing i don't know just say fencing in the backyard or something in, or putting some posts in and you don't want that truck concrete truck sitting there and paying in for waiting time you can just mix the concrete as you need it so i imagine that's that's what that concept would be um what else did we see there a lot of interesting stuff a lot of interesting stuff i did see there's a lot of new chinese and korean branded machines around and and attachments um they had a lot of stalls there so a lot of a lot of chinese and korean um stalls i think um oh, there was a lot of machinery there apart from like xcmg and all that there was a few other new brands that i haven't even heard of um so there's a lot of little chinese brands floating around and they're doing a lot of attachments in that now so um I don't know if anyone else was there. You can probably um, agree with me or not, but there was yeah a lot, a lot of new Chinese brands floating around. I just need another sip there. I'm talking a lot. Uh, what else was there? So yeah, no, a lot, a lot of things, a lot of things. Simulators. I got to meet, and I'm really, really grateful. Um, a lot of people came up to me and said hello which was a really good feeling to know that people have recognized me and um, are actually watching what I'm talking about. How you going there, Pete? Nice to meet Nice to see you. Uh, we've got Debbie as well, Cav, Dirt Pyro, Axis Earthworks. So we've got a lot of people coming on. So thank you for joining. Just a quick shout out to everyone. So I'm trying to read out names. Thank you for joining, guys. If I missed your name, I'm sorry. Uh, what else was there? Okay, so... Well, I was going to say, though, at Diesel Dirt and Turf, so apart from um, you know, getting to meet a lot of people and learning about a lot of new products, one thing I did notice is a lot of sales guys were reluctant to actually talk to me, um, which I found very strange. Like a lot of sales guys, um, when I tried to approach them and say, like, hey, do you want to do a 20-second thing and showcase your stuff? Uh, they didn't really want to do it. So... It's funny because I, I listen to a guy called Andy Elliott every now and then and watch him on YouTube. So hopefully someone else here has heard about Andy Elliott. He's like a, a car sales guy that has become huge on and trains people on becoming proper salespeople. And one thing that he always says is that a lot of people think that they're a salesperson, but they actually don't have the true heart or they don't do a, as good a job as they think. So a lot of sales guys, I think... Um, don't uh what can i how can i put it without offending anyone i think a, a true salesman should be able to talk in front of a camera should be able to talk and and um promote their products no matter who they're talking to or whatever but yeah there's a lot a lot of guys were really reluctant which was a bit funny to me because i think yeah if you really want to sell something you need to just get up and talk in front of cameras and do whatever it doesn't matter how embarrassed you are or if you think you're not not um, able to do it and a lot of guys my hat goes off to the guys that did do it some people were a bit reluctant and then after trying they were like oh wow that was it that was wasn't as bad as i thought and um, i know from experience as well i'm nervous when i come and talk on these things i'm getting better as well which is another reason i wanted to do all this podcasting so i can get 
better and improve myself. Um, talking, exp- uh, explaining things, getting you know, getting the correct words out, trying to keep conversation going, and it's working. I'm getting better, getting a lot more confident. Thank you for joining as well. We've got uh, Koza. He's asking some questions there about mining experience. Um, I don't have any mining experience. Um, I wouldn't mind meeting, going up to a mine though or something one day and just checking it out. So he's going to a BHP site in bulk water truck. So he's never driven one before. Well, good luck with that, man. I saw a massive, massive water truck at, um, at Diesel Dirt and Turf. They are monsters, those things. So uh, good luck with that, man. Hopefully it works out well for you. Uh, so yeah, I won't get you going on about that, but Diesel Dirt and Turf, um, I just wanted to say that, yeah, a lot, I was surprised a lot of salespeople were a bit reluctant to talk. So um, I think you should you should really think about it. Um, if you're a true salesman, you should be able to just get up and talk and, and promote your stuff wherever you are and whenever. Um, I did do something, so I'll change the subject now. Um, I got some hoodies made up. So in the background here, uh, I got my sample hoodie delivered. I will show you quickly, guys, if I can. One second. Anyone that's keen, anyone that's keen to get one of these, this is the hoodie and what it looks like. So at the front you've got Earthworks Hub, just a simple one. At the back you've got the full logo. So sorry if I've lost uh, people, but this is the full logo on the back here and the website. So yeah, overall very very happy with that. So that is now also available in my store. So you can go to the website, earthworkshub.com.au, and you can purchase one of those. So the hoodies are now available. Uh, Very shortly, I will be making some hats. Just having some issues there with files. Apparently, they need certain embroidery files. It can't be just a normal um, PNG file or whatever, picture file. Crazy. I'm learning as I go. Thank you for the likes, guys. Um, we've got some questions now. I was going to talk about some other things, but I might start answering. So Koza is also saying, so he's the guy that's going to BHP mine. He's asking, do you prefer skid steers or a posi? Uh, I always prefer a posi track. So a tracked loader, a posi track, whatever guys want to call them. I like the tracks personally. I think one, you never really sort of get bogged. Uh, you do, but you you can, but you don't really get bogged if you can try and um, go in there the right way. And also you can track over th- like grass and things without ripping them up. You get a bit more of a chance, like a second chance, you know, without ripping stuff up. So to answer your question there, Koza, thanks for the likes. I would say a, a tracked loader or tracked skid steer or posi is what is, in my opinion, better. Um, and they're a lot more stable. So I find that if you have the wheeled versions, they're not as stable and they sort of bounce around a bit, especially if you go to lift um, dirt. So Skid Steer is saying he can tip a lot easier. Um, I think the posi tracks are a lot more stable because you've got more um, track cover on the ground. You know what I mean? You're more balanced. It's like you're, you're, spread, you're spread differently to just having four points. You actually spread across the whole, the whole perimeter, if that makes sense. Um, and FSA is saying, and they're heaps smoother as well. Yeah, you're right. So especially when you're detailing and stuff, I find that the wheeled ones, you sort of, you, you get waves and you bounce around a lot more. Um, the posi tracks are a lot smoother and also will cut, cut smoother as well. Uh, and also have that bit more grunt. So if you have to actually like plow into a pile or you need to like grade and cut like a, you know, like a, a flat surface, I think they'll cut a lot smoother and, and have that pushing power, whereas the wheels will just spin. Um, they have their different purposes. I suppose a skid steer tired one might be better on roads. However, on the roads as well, I've noticed when you try and turn or rotate or spin with a, a wheeled one, it can sort of go, sort of bounce you around, if that makes sense. So you sort of judder around, whereas the um, tracks where you just sort of slide and spin around more. But you do wear your tracks out very quick on the road. Um, which is another another point. Um, what else have we got? So, how am I going with time? Am I doing all right? Okay, so uh, thanks to FSA Earth Moving, we've got Siva. Who else we got? Built to 
the T, built to the T, I like that. Um, Cos is saying he likes skid steers for tight turns, and that's about it. Yeah, true, true. Um, and user is saying that he's just changed his as he's, as we speak. Um, Dirt Pirate loves his skid steers. He's saying they're two different machines. Yeah, that's true. I suppose they have their different purposes. You know what I mean? Um, and to be honest, I really just started out in the posi track and have always sort of stayed in them. And then whenever I've had to jump in someone's skid steer and do something, um, because I don't go in them often, I didn't like it. I wasn't used to it. I actually went and jumped in the Toyota Husky once and had to use all the foot controls and that, and uh, I felt like a beginner. And, and I think the guys who were watching me were probably thinking, this guy doesn't have any idea what he's doing. Um, but once I jumped back in the posse, then, you know what I mean, it's like I'm home again. So, um, yeah, that little Husky was good, but uh, and also dangerous because when I tried to load the trucks with a full bucket, I was almost tipping all the time. I had to be really careful. So, um, yeah, I do prefer the um, track loaders, if that if that's what you guys want to call them. Um, so, yeah, the hoodie is there. You can also purchase on my site, from, apart from the hoodie, you can purchase um, T-shirts. And now I've made another series of T-shirts which have all the sponsors on the back. So that way, um, if you want to have one with, like, something on the back of them, it has all the sponsors on there. So um, especially sponsors, they probably want those sort of T-shirts as well. But um, and they look good with all different um, patterns on the back too. Uh, thank you for joining Acre Landscaping. Okay, here we go. Tristan is asking, have you ever driven a wheeled excavator, and what are they like? Are they different digging? You know, I always wonder, do they lose digging power because uh, because of the tires? You know what I mean? Like, I do know they have the the little legs that come out and hold them like the backhoes, and they you know they they put the legs down. And that sort of strengthens things, but I wonder whether they can't dig as much as a regular excavator because of that they haven't got that sort of track um, and weight on the ground. You know what I mean? They've only got those little four points plus the two, the four points of the tires plus the um, stands. I don't know. I, I haven't used one. Um, I had a mate that recently bought one, and now I see that he doesn't um, have it anymore. I think he sold it. So I wonder whether there's just not enough work for him. Or um, I know they like to use them on like road upgrades and, you know, freeways and things because, you know, you can do a lot of um, traveling up and down without having to float machines. So I think, oh, yeah, Cos is saying, so, yeah, the the wheeled uh, excavators, they can't because, um, yeah, they can't. Yeah, that's why so they have to be a bit bigger. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So they're good for lifting though. So I suppose they can use them as cranes and stuff and move move things around. Um, but they are, they're, yeah, they're probably, probably made uh, more for like roads and things because they can travel up and down quickly to, to help people when they need stuff. Whereas if you're in the excavator, you've got a track and it takes you ages and they might need to get um, trucks to move you around. Um, yeah, and good for train works. That's exactly right. So user is saying uh, they're good for that. Potter's Plant Hire, thanks for joining as well. So no, I haven't used one. I reckon they'd be interesting. There's a guy, I watch a video, I watch uh, posts from him. I can't remember what his name was now. And he has one of those wheeled loaders, but on the, uh, attached to the back of him, he has like a little tipping trailer. So he drags that along at the same time and then loads it loads it while he works and then um, reverses back and tips it off. It does like it. It's like an all-in-one system, little truck and, and machine all-in-one. Um, it's really good to watch. I can't remember what his name is now, but um, if I think about it, I'll let you know. So we got Lucky as well. Thanks for joining. So no, wheel loader. No, I haven't. So yes, uh, was well, again back to all the uh, the merch. So there's a lot of merch available there now on my website. Tristan is saying difference with a Kubota U55 to the KX57. I operate a 57. What's the difference? The main difference between a U55 and a 57 is the one the the bum on the back. So the 57 is not a zero swing. It would be, and one of my mates bought a 57 for that reason. It, he wanted more comfort, so he's not bouncing around. Um, so the 57, good if you want to um, have a bit more comfort. I think the cabin might be a slightly bigger as well inside. Um, so, and I think the 57 as well might have a little bit more horsepower than uh, the 55. Uh, 55, full zero swing machine, 
um, long reach on it, um, very handy when you need to be up against walls and things. But um, the 57, probably good when you don't need to be right up hard against you know other objects or walls and stuff. Um, and the only thing, I, the only reason I never got a 57, which I almost almost got a 57, um, was because I had to load it in my in the back of my tip truck. Uh, so originally I was carrying my five and five tonners in the back of the tipper and it was a, um, like a smaller body, well, not, the, not the long bodies. And if it was a 57, I would not have been able to fit it in there because the bum would have been sticking out too much and I wouldn't have that room to keep all the buckets and everything in the, in the truck at the same time. Um, so that's why I ended up getting the 55 as well. So, um, I've had U, U48s, U50, uh, U55s, KX41, 141s. Um, all different Kubotas, the Kabelco SK50, um, everything that had a zero swing on it, I could fit in the truck. If it didn't, it was, it, um, if it didn't have zero swing, I couldn't fit it in. Hmm. A good question, user. So users asking, I say user, it has a whole bunch of numbers after it, but I'm not going to repeat those. Uh, user is asking. The video that you recently showed drilling in mudstone, what auger type was it? Full rock or dedicated rock or soil? It was a dedicated rock auger. Uh, it was a PD-12 on a case uh, CX-145. So I was in the 14 and a half ton case, one of my favorite um, 15 tons to operate. Um, that was a PD-12 with an extension on there and a dedicated rock auger. auger and it was 600 mil wide. So the dedicated rock had the little the little bullet teeth on there, um, and it chewed through it really really well. It just I had to go, had to leave it in automatic so that it sort of spun slow enough to actually dig, and I had to take take it out uh, more often to let the teeth cool. Um, very very solid ground. I, I don't know if you've just seen. I posted another video there of the thirty five tonner um, that we've got digging there as well, and he had to go and actually buy tiger teeth and put them on just to be able to get through the, the tough mudstone. So we tried using uh, rippers, tried using a smaller bucket, and in the end he just kept his um, GP bucket but bought um, tiger teeth, and that made a big difference, but uh, very, very solid ground. So I've been detailing there this week as well with the 14 tonner. We tried to start detailing with my five, but um, it was just too, too solid. So now we're using the um, 15 tonner to do all the detail work. And then I'm going to start doing all the um, edge beams and all that. Probably with the fifth, probably I might have to hammer all the edge beams out a little bit and then dig them with the five tonner and we'll see what happens. But um, very solid ground, man. Yeah, so uh, user saying he's going to be doing the same thing next week. Yeah, definitely. I reckon um, definitely the, what do you call it, dedicated rock teeth um, worked well in that material. So I've tried to use a core barrel in that material before, but it doesn't it doesn't work. It just spins, 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 doesn't actually do anything. Um Tristan's asking, what's the case five tonner like? You know, it's been a long time since I used the case five, but they were based, I think, on the old Cabalcos. So um being in a Cabalco more recently as well, I reckon um they're a not bad machine. So yeah, the the case five tonner is really good. Case seem to be really good, man. They've got a good um, backup system and that. Like all the guys I know that have case machines, they always get um, the guys come out very very quick when something breaks down. Um, they they get the they got a, re a good service team. Even the case rental team. Every time I've rented stuff from them, they're very very helpful. So um, I got to say, I really like the casing. It's funny I've never bought one, um, and I almost did buy a one four five, which I probably. Um, think I, I should have bought, but um, the KCX 145 would be one of my favorite machines in the offset version. That's like an all rounder. KCX 145, tilting hitch, um, offset boom, rubber pads would be one of the ultimate uh, machines, I reckon. So he's saying, uh, Tristan's saying the new ones are based on a Hyundai in of the KC 5 tonner. Ah, so the KC 5 tonner now is based on a Hyundai, okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, something we learn something new every day. Look, a lot of these machines are based on other machines. So sitting in that um, case CX one four five, it's funny they don't even try and hide it. But if I, when I look to the right of the cabin and see that where the hydraulic pump is, 
some of the hoses that are coming out of the pump actually say Sumitomo on there. So um, obviously, yeah, Case and Sumitomo, very similar machines. Um, yeah, the actual hoses do say Sumitomo on them. So um, they probably, there you go, they don't even really try and hide it. So I have another quick sip here. It's a Sunday afternoon, surely we're allowed to. So for anyone that hasn't, um, anyone that hasn't actually signed up or listed their business on the Earthworks Hub website, make sure you do go on there and get some good exposure for your business because there's a lot, a lot of people going on there. I've got um, Google Analytics set up now, so it tells me there's there's over 200 and something visits per day on there. So it's starting to increase a lot, a lot of interest. So yeah, get your businesses on there make sure so you can um, win some more work especially in these tougher times it is a bit quiet so advertise and make sure you get yourselves known out there and help each other so ah sorry Helen, we've got some um, more info here dirt pirate is saying six ton and under they are hyundai eight ton and up they're a sumitomo case don't make their own excavators there you go information for you guys thank you very much dirt pirate uh, Tristan's saying, what are the Komatsu PC138s like? Yeah, so if you look at one of my recent videos, I was just saying before, Ash from Komatsu, um, let me sit on the 138 at the um, Diesel Dirt and Turf Expo. Yeah, it seemed like a very, very smooth machine. It was Look, it was a very, very short time in it. The PC138 was very smooth. Um, I tried, I was busy sort of looking at the RFK or the GPS guidance system more than the actual machine, but, uh, overall it was good. Um, has a sliding door on it rather than a, than a, um, a normal hinge door. Um, what else was there? Had, had a zero swing bum on it. I think they're a good machine. I had a Komatsu PC78, so I had a Komatsu 800 at one stage and, um, I found it very, very slow. I don't know if the machine was just faulty but I didn't have it for long because it used to irritate me. It was just very, very slow. I tried um, changing all the hydraulic fluids on it. I tried getting the hydraulics adjusted and we just could never get it to, to sort of be a bit quicker and, and work at a quicker pace. Um, so I ended up getting rid of it later. But um, the PC138 seemed to be you know a lot quicker, moved around. It must be just a Komatsu thing. That it's like they slow things down a little bit which, like I say, can be good sometimes because it makes you slow down and think a bit more as an operator. It gives you time to actually concentrate on what you're doing, whereas sometimes when the machine's a lot quicker, you tend to move quick with it, and then you and then you can sort of do things two, three times, or you you just sort of go, 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 and then you, you're not really fully concentrating. So maybe that's the reason that they slowed them down. I don't know. But no, I don't know. The 138, a very, very brief time in it, and I think it was all right. It was pretty good. Uh, Tristan's asking the PC88, what is the difference between the PC88 and the PC78? Is there much difference? You know what? To be honest, I have no idea. I don't know if the 88 is just a new version of the 78. I have a feeling it might be. It might have just taken over. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been in one, so I can't really sort of answer. But I imagine it might just be a different version, like a, new, a newer version of it. Um... What else was it? I actually got to use, so I, I don't know if you guys have noticed that video went up, I got to sit in the case uh, CX-235 as well. So I got into a Zero Swing 235. Um, very, very happy with that machine as well. I did also notice it had that like a slow return, like, you know, as you're dragging it back towards yourself, it had a very, very slow return. Um, but that was also good because, like I said before, it gave me time to actually look around while I'm waiting for it to come back in to look around before I start swinging and that, which is probably a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, it's not like I was losing power in that. It was just a lot slower than what I'm used to. And I suppose I was jumping in out of a, a five tonner into the 20 tonner and it probably just felt like it was a lot slower because, you know, obviously it's a bigger machine. But yeah, that case 235 two, with the um, blade at the front and in the tight space I was working in, was an awesome, awesome machine as well. So very, very happy with that. Um, I did a review on the Yanmar Vio 55. So hopefully you guys got to see that video this week as well. I just released it. 
Um, very, very quick videos these are, so I don't spend too much time there going over all the details. Um, there you go. The, the plumbing company is asking me uh, how did I find Marco's machine, so he knows which machines I'm talking about. So, yeah, the 235 was fantastic. Um, I sat in the Vio 55, so I've used the, the Amars in the past, but I haven't sat in these new burgundy ones. Um, I love that color. I had a discussion with someone the other day, and they reckon I'm crazy. They say they don't like them, but I actually like that burgundy color. I reckon I reckon it's a good change. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. So I actually like it. It stands out. Um, but overall, the Yanmar was very, very good. I felt like it was still very powerful, a lot more stable than my Kubota, probably on par with the Komatsu PC55. Um, it had good reach. Um I didn't actually look if they I think they're are they turbo? Can anyone confirm that? Because I could hear like like a turbo noise every time I was using it. I I could didn't get time to open it because I'm I was sort of working. And that's why when I do reviews on these machines, I can't always get out and check everything because I'm actually working. So I can't stop and get out and film. Um it's only the ones where I can stay back and have a look at them properly that I can do like a whole prop proper review. But um the Vio 55, um, I reckon it was a good machine. Very, very good machine. Uh, like I said, I like that color. They haven't really changed that much from the older ones. Um, but surprisingly stable. Yeah, for a zero swing machine, very, very stable. Um, and I, I used it without a tilting hitch and still found it like not too bad. Now, now I'm so used to my tilting hitch. When I don't have one, I hate it. But um, that wasn't too bad. Darren... Thanks for joining. Angry Operators joined as well. Got JP Concrete. I saw Angry Operator at Diesel Dirt and Turf. Thanks for coming up and saying hello. Um, yeah, Tristan's saying he operated the Vio 55 a long time ago and he loves them. Darren saying, SK55 Cabalco, what do you think? Well, I think they're a good machine as well. Um, something I noticed in the Yanmar and the Cabalco is there was like this squealing noise every time... I pulled the arm up right up or if I tried to put a lot of pressure on it, there was um, there was like a squealing noise. I think that is because both of those machines happen to have the, the burst valves. I think it's the burst valves that make that squealing noise, but that's what I noticed with the Cabalco and the Yanmar. They had that little squeal when um, I was trying to, to pull the bucket back. Um, so I don't know if anyone can confirm that or not, but I just remember both of those machines had burst valves on them. And both of them did like a squealing noise. But the Cabalco was good. I did a, a video not long ago with uh, an SK55. And I used it in a job. We were in like really, really thick mud. Really, really hard. Um, like we were lifting up uh, 600 mil concrete pipes. And we were doing all this sort of um, work in a little creek area. So I kept sinking all the time. And the tracks were fully covered in mud in the SK55, and it still performed well, man. Like, it did slow down a bit because of all the mud in the drives and that. But overall, the machine did really well. But I do remember um, that it had, um, like, a squeal, and I reckon that's what it is. It's a burst valve. Oh, yeah, here we go. The angry operator's confirming, yeah. So he says in the SK500, um, the valves do it do it because it does his head in. Yeah, I think you're right, man. That must be them because that's the only machines I've heard it on. Um yeah, and Darren's also saying, yeah, they do do that. So that's it. Um, yeah, Darren's saying that he does it as well. So it must be the burst valves because on my Kubota, I don't have them and it doesn't actually do it. So, And on a couple of other machines I used, I've noticed it doesn't doesn't do that noise. Oh, we got Bean Digging. We've got Style Civil on Insta, Elite Show and Shine. Thanks for joining, guys. Mick Cruises. Um, angry Operator saying you just passed 90 degree with a full bucket and you hear it. Yes, very true. Yeah, you do. You do hear it. So um, one thing I did like about the uh, Yanmars is that they have that little sliding cover um, in front of all the ramps on the top, on the dipper arm, on the boom. On, they've got covers everywhere, so that way you don't, you can't hit the um, the rams or the cylinders. Um, I know on my Kubota, I I bent my one, and then I've got forever. I've got this squeal now. Every time I bring the bucket in and out, sorry, I just hit the mic. Every time I bring the bucket in and out, um, the the sliding protector screeches metal to metal and it gets really annoying. I actually took it off the other day. I've had enough. So um, I tried bending it back and all this and it's just, I can't get it right again. Now it just squeals. 
<laughs> angry operator. When's the big announcement? We met the controversial angry operator. <laughs> so yes, I did. I actually at Diesel Dirt and Turf, I was just saying to the guys, I actually met the controversial angry operator. You know what? I think, um, in my opinion, I think you're a top bloke, man. You're coming up, saying hello, having a quick chat. You can tell what someone's like. It was good to meet you. I think um, everyone's got different opinions on things, um, and we just have to all be able to to deal with it, you know what I mean? So, uh, no, it was good to meet you. And like I said, it was really nice to see that people recognize me, and, and it, it makes me proud to say that I'm do what I'm doing is, is effective. So thank you, and, and thank you for the likes, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, what have we got? Tristan saying, are the Bobcat 5 tonners good? I've only operated a 1.8. Yeah, it was good to see you too, man. Um, I haven't operated a Bobcat 5 tonner. Hang on, have I? I can't remember. I've been in so many machines, I can't remember. I don't think I have used a Bobcat 5 tonner, but um, I imagine that'd be good. Yeah, I reckon that'd be good. Um, Tristan's saying, yeah, they're awesome. So, oh no, sorry, Darren. Darren's saying to Tristan, yeah, that he's saying the Bobcat 5 tonners are awesome. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried one. It might be good to, to have a go one day, but I haven't actually sat in one. So I'm just going to have another sip. Look, it's nearly empty. Thank you very much for the likes, guys. So this show, for anyone that joined a bit later, I'm going to be posting it up as well. So what I've decided to do now is, yeah, for a lot of people that miss these shows or wanted to hear something or can't remember something, I'm going to post it up as a podcast every week so you can actually go back and listen to them. So I know um, you can always fast forward if it's a bit boring for you, but um, if you want to go back and check something, at least you've got the ability to do that now. So that'll be posted now every week as well. But I'll still be doing um, podcasts with other guys and that in between. So this is just like a, a weekly thing. Um, what else was there? The Case 235, the Yamaha. Uh, thanks for joining. Oh, sexy 80. Some of these names on here are really good. So we've got, um, new listings. So I already repeated that before. I'm got, I've got a list here that I'm looking at. So make sure I've got a couple of new listings on there, uh, on the website of, so we've got, let me just grab this. Oh, we got, uh, who have we got? So we've got a few new ones. The so next gen landscapes have become a sponsor and they've listed, uh, Mills Excavation, uh, we've got a lot of financial companies on there now, so if you guys need finance, make sure you go on to um, the Earthworks Hub website and you can see those guys, you try and use the services of the people that are on, on this system, you know. But um, yeah, you've got all sorts of people, like network finance, AI engineering, um, styles, civil, Presti plumbing, Ascend Earthworks, there's heaps on here. So make sure you go on there, use the services of the guys that are here, it's Australia-wide. If you haven't listed and you want more work, make sure you go on there. So you don't have to be just excavator businesses. You can you can be uh, sales, attachment sales, um, machinery sales. You can be form work guys, concreters, whatever, anything to do, NDD truck operators, anything like that. You can any sort of, sort of earthworks business, a plumber, electrician, anything to do with digging in the ground, list your businesses on there. So someone here, what have we got? So Tristan. Triple seven is saying the other day he operated a 1988 Komatsu 22 ton. 1988, wow. Uh, it was crazy. I was loading logs with it. A 1988 model, wow. Um, that must be like that old square. Was that like the old square type cabins and square, really, really square type machine? Like that's what I imagine when you say 1988. Um, so that would be, what, 36 years old, yeah. Yeah, the square type, yeah. Um, has anyone seen how they used to operate machines in the old days? They used to have, like, the old string and chain thing, and they used to actually use that. Crazy. Uh, Caleb, thanks for joining. Who else is on here? We've got Mick Cruisers. Kristen saying that machine had controls at the front. Um, and Cos is saying he even operated in a backhoe. Oh, have I ever operated a backhoe? Sorry, guys, there's a fly taking me here. Uh, Cosa, I think he's trying to say ever operated in a backhoe. I have had a quick go in the backhoe. Uh, I think it was a cat, and um, I was hopeless. Very, very bad on it. 
I was trying to pick up dirt. I was, I was trying to pick up crushed rock. No, screenings. That's right. I remember I was trying to pick up screenings and they were really upset with me because I mixed all the screenings with the dirt. I couldn't pick it all up. Absolutely hopeless. Um, I thought it'd be easy. So I said, yeah, I'll just jump in and move some stuff for you. And <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't pick it up for, for the life of me. Um, I had to get someone to stand outside and guide me to lift the bucket or tilt it or whatever to try and pick up without making a mess. They, they weren't very happy. Uh, Darren is asking... Thank you very much for the likes. Marchin, thanks for joining. Um, Darren is asking, what do you think of the ASV Posi? Uh, I don't know which particular model, but um, the ASV, <laughs> hey, how you going? Yeah, the ASV, um, I've had an ASV RC30, so a little, little um, uh, what do you call it? Like a PT30. They, the Terex used to call them PT30s. So I had a little open cab RC30. ASV with a Perkins motor that was really really good for us for a small little posi track um, fantastic little machine powerful quick um, and that used to go and fit down the side of houses I'll be roaring around people couldn't believe when I used to turn up with the RC30 people used to look at me and go oh god here we go this is gonna take forever and then when they see me start moving in that thing they used to, they used to be amazed um, small bucket so you couldn't really carry too much at once but you could zip around so quick in it. Um, and, yeah, the only thing, only thing I hated was open cab. I could smell diesel and fumes all the time. That's the only thing I hated, all the exhaust fumes in it. So especially when you're tearing down the side of a house and that, or you, as you go out or in the, the property and come back out, you're, you're smelling all that fumes that you've just left behind. So that's the only thing I hated about the open cab. And it was loud. That little RC30 was loud. I used to wear ear, ear, uh, earmuffs. Um so that's the ASV RC30. Then they became a Terex. So I had a PT60. Marchin will know about the Terex PT60. Awesome little um, posi track. Um, that was one of my favorites, but it was also open cab. And um, good vision. You could see down the bottom of the bucket. Very light machine. You could go straight over the top of uh, mulch, straight over the top of grass without destroying it. Um, I really, really enjoyed that machine. Had enough power to do what I wanted it to do, and um, that was a really good machine. So the only thing is, it got accumulated accumulated a lot of hours on it, and then it came time to upgrade, and I ended up going with a different machine. So um, it just happened to get. I think I can't remember what it was. A better price at that time, or I can't remember what it was. Um, here we go. Martin was saying had perspex on that posi to make it close. That's right. Yes, I forgot about that, Martin. Yes, I actually invented the. I think you helped me put them on, man. We we got perspex, so we went to Bunnings, bought some clear perspex, and we screwed perspex to the sides and on the little front section to try and make it partly uh, closed cab. That's right, I forgot, and that it did work. It made it better because you could at least stop the wind coming in from the sides, especially when it was winter. That's right, Martin. You reminded me of that. Um, so yeah, we used perspex to try and enclose it a bit. I actually bought a massive piece of Perspex and hinges and was going to make a front door. The only problem was if I did do that, we didn't have a wiper on the front. We didn't have um, air con and heating in there. So you, you wouldn't be able to demist. You know, it would fog up straight away. But it definitely, yeah, March and I agree, man. You're saying it made it a lot more comfortable in winter because um, it used to be freezing in there. So, um, yeah, I remember being always – and then when it rained – in the posi track, it used to with the open cab, all your knees used to get all wet, and then you start, uh, then you operate for the rest of the day with wet pants and that. Oh, yes, don't remind me, <laughs> don't remind me of those days. <laughs> and then when you're doing uh, topsoil, and then you've got your sunglasses on at the end of the day, you take them off and you look like a raccoon because uh, you've got all white around your eyes. Um, so yeah, no, I do, I do. Um, I've had a, a PT sixty. We had a what do we ask? Do I have? I had an SVL seventy five. That was a, that was a very powerful posi track, um, very heavy though. So yeah, that's right. After the PT sixty, I upgraded to the um, it, Kubota SVL seventy five. I just found it very very heavy, um, four and a half ton, and loud. That big fan on the back was so loud, um, and it used to be the cabin used to shake a lot. I remember as you're tracking, oh, loving the likes, man. Thank you. Yeah, as you're um, tracking the cabin, the whole cabin used to shake and rattle. 
So um, yeah, that that actually got stolen. That the SVR seventy five went missing from a job, and all they left was the uh, smudge bar on site. Uh, actually, they left my tip truck and the smudge bar there, and then just took the posi track. Um, and then after that SVL seventy five, I ended up with the Cat two three nine, and that that's um, a very very nice machine. The posi posi uh, the Cat two three nine D, very very nice. Um, and that's why I was looking at the Cat two five five. I couldn't wait to see the unveiling of the two five five because I wanted to upgrade to a two five nine. And then now that the 255 is out, yeah, you never know. You never know. We'll see what happens. Um, what else? What else? So, no, thank you for all the, all the uh, topics and the feedback, guys. This is really good. Um, something, actually, I wanted to raise a point. Somebody sent me during the week a question about um, running a business. So, obviously, I've got my business. I did business management at uni. I used to manage other um I was a production manager for over 11 years as well in the past. So I was in the corporate world. So I do understand a lot about, you know, running businesses, finance, all that stuff in the background that a lot of people hate. Um, somebody in the, during the week said, can I talk a little bit more about the actual financials of a business and, and go go a little bit more into detail? So I'm going to start doing that. I, I might actually do a whole episode on that um, in the near future where I talk about, and I can actually run you through, I actually have spreadsheets that I use to determine how well I'm running. So with my spreadsheets, I say like what my profit is on the machine, how much I get per hour basically. Then I say, all right, what are my expenses on that? So I'll go through every single expense, deduct that from the profit. If I have an operator, you know, all the operator's expenses, super, this, that, payroll tax. And then I ha I actually have at the bottom of my spreadsheet what I actually end up with on a daily basis for each machine. So I think I might share that with you guys. So do you guys want me to share that? If you want me to do um, a podcast on high-end financials for your business, I'm happy to do that. Um, Darren's saying yes, so that's good, man. That's very good. I will, I will do that. I think it would be a good idea um, just to, for everyone to be able to work out how effective their business really is because um, I think a lot of us think we're doing really, really well. But sometimes when you sit down and crunch the numbers, you might not be doing as well as you think. Um, before I get any further, Koza is asking, is it worth getting a machine to dry hire? Is it worth getting a machine to dry hire? That is um, a good question. I have dry hired machines in the past. So Echuka Civil, thanks for joining. Mitchell as well. We've got Mark O'Donnell. Um, I think... It depends on what you want to do. If you want to just dry hire your businesses, if you just want to dry hire your equipment, um, it might be hard because a lot of times if you're not a dry hire company, people don't know you, they're not going to come to you first. Yeah, They're going to go to all those um, proper rental um, places that do it permanently. So you have to either have some people that you know that will rent it from you every now and then. So, for instance, I had a 1.8 ton Kubota at one stage. I used to use that for my own jobs. And then if somebody, Next Gen Civil, thanks for joining, then if somebody that I knew, like I had a couple of plumber friends, um, instead of having their own machines, they used to just ring me and say, hey, can we just dry hire your 1.8 ton every now and then? And the 5 tonner as well. So they used to just say, can we dry hire your 5? And I'd just make sure I don't book any jobs on those days. But um, for me to have it just sitting there and waiting for people to dry hire it, I would have had a lot of days where it wasn't doing anything. So I had to do a bit of a blend. I had to use it for myself and then also rent it out. Um, the only other thing is yeah, if you get something and then advertise yourself as just dry hiring it all the time, maybe, maybe it's worth it. But uh, I stopped dry hiring because um, not – those, those, after my 1.8 tonner got stolen, I didn't get another one. That was um, getting rented a lot more. The 5 tonner got rented a few times. And the last time the 5 tonner got rented, it came back with concrete all over it. So the guys that rented it, uh, I'm not going to name names, but the guys that rented it were, um, oh, my life's going to end. Hang on a second. Oh, it's good now. Yeah, so the guys that rented that 5 tonner, 
were I think they were doing board piers or they were doing some some sort of concrete work. They used my five tonner to to cart the concrete from the front of the property to the back, fill the holes, come back. As they were tracking, they obviously were splashing in the bucket and they were splashing all over the machine. They obviously had the cabin open and the front window open and it went all over the interior. And then instead of doing the right thing and cleaning it, they just left the machine with the concrete on it. It all went hard and it was a pain in the ass trying to clean that machine and get it back to, back to, um, back to normal again. That was the last straw. I had guys like break stuff on there. Someone twisted the hitch. Somebody broke the um, pedals on the, on the foot levers, all sorts of stuff um, on other jobs. And that's it. Yeah, I stopped. That, that concrete killed me. That was the last, the last straw. And I said, never again. Um, and then when I tried to charge that person cleaning fees, they weren't happy with me and all this sort of crap. And yeah, I tried to back charge and um, they just wouldn't hear any, wouldn't have any of it. And I refused to give them business anymore. Um, and then, yeah, just trusting the operators because when you're renting it out, you don't know who's going to be sitting on that machine. So that's that's the other problem. Um yeah, so someone's asking, so what have we got? Tristan saying, uh, is it best to stick with one brand with excavators in the business? You could say that. Um, I think what I tried to do at one stage is I tried to go all out Kubota. So I had all Kubota 5 tonners, Posi Track 1.8. I had a few, all, like I thought I'll just do everything Kubota. Um, that way, if, if I get a service done, the same service guy comes out, does all the machines. They've, they've got all the parts all in one spot, but it doesn't always work. It doesn't really matter because um, even though I tried to do that, I ended up because I needed different sizes. I had Cabelco, 14s, 20s, um, had to have all different brands in the end anyway. And sometimes I just had like mobile mechanics come out and work on stuff and they did it. They worked across all the machines anyway, so it didn't really matter. Um yeah, Darren's saying stick with Cabelco, it's the best. They are, look, Cabelco's are good machines um, and the service, so Melbourne Tractors are one of my sponsors. Their service is fantastic. They helped me out a lot. I have to tell you, they went beyond um, what they had to do in a lot of times. Even when it came to insurance, when I had machines broken into and things stolen, they helped me through all the insurance processes. Um, really, really nice guys to work with, down to earth. So um, I, I, yeah, I can't say a bad thing about them. I think and Cabelco does make uh, good machines. Um, do they service your? <laughs> oh, lucky I didn't read that out. If we get some weird people in here, uh, Tristan saying I wish Kubota made a thirteen. Yeah, look, I think when I spoke to the Kubota guys, they they were saying they just want to specialize in up to, you know, the eight ton machine, and that's it. Like that's that's their biggest machine i think that there might be a smart move you know because if they expand too much then they've got more parts to have to worry about you know what i mean it just means they're going to have to worry about a lot more whereas this way they can concentrate on the machines that they have um, and Kubota still does a lot of um farming equipment so that was their, their main focus originally i think so um they're just going to focus on that one market which is the smaller machines and it might be a wise decision you know not spreading it themselves too thin so, um, yeah, Martin, thank you for the likes. So that's my opinion on that. Uh, how are we going with time? Am I doing all right? I'm babbling on a lot here. Um, I have started a Facebook page. So make sure you go onto the Facebook, uh, Earthworks Hub Facebook group. Not a Facebook page, a first Facebook group. This fly is attacking me. It's going crazy. Um, but yeah, I started a Facebook group called Earthworks Hub, so make sure you join that group. I'm going to be trying to post a lot of stuff on there just for our individual group. Um, I've got so many bloody socials now that I'm not sure what I'm posting where anymore. So sometimes I post something in Insta and TikTok and then forget um, Facebook or forget um, YouTube. So I think I've got to start looking at that. And I've got some of my old accounts and account names that I'm trying to still posting and it's just becoming a lot so i'm gonna to have to start streamlining that um even like with eagle one industries i'm not posting things on there anymore i'm just doing it all through earthworks hub so you might notice i'm not posting much on eagle one anymore it's just because i can't post across so many different socials uh darren saying he doesn't like the new holland posi tracks just not powerful yeah i don't know i don't know if I, i'm not a big fan of them i did sit in a couple of them couple of mates have those and I don't know. 
a couple of guys swear by them. Um, and it's the same as the the case posse. Yeah, I don't know. Some guys like them, some don't. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I like them that much. Um, yeah, the electric controls let them down. Tristan's saying electric controls let the machines down, the posies. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. You're right. The electric over hydraulic or whatever is, um, is good. Like the, I have to admit, like the cat is very, very smooth. The hydraulics are so sensitive that after I jump in any other posi track and then jump into the cat, I just, I don't know, just so smooth. It's just really, really smooth. Yeah, he's, <laughs> Darren's saying he'll stick with the cat. BKA Earthworks, thanks for joining as well. So, um, yeah, I've still got a little bit more time. I can keep taking questions. Um, also, oh, we've got Level Up Earth moving here as well now. So thanks for joining. Yeah, so what else would you guys like to discuss? I'm leaving it up to you guys. Oh, no, sorry. I forgot to keep going with the financials. That's what I was going to start with. So I will be doing a podcast mainly on... Um, you know, like uh, finances for the business. Something I want to double check with guys is, do you have a separate account for your GST and taxes? Um, and I'm going to mention this because I recently got caught out myself and something that um, my father-in-law, father-in-law used to have his own business and he taught me this from the start. Keep a separate account. So some, some really, really good advice here. Keep a separate account for your GST and some tax so that you don't get caught out when it comes time to paying tax and not have any money because what I got taught is that every time you get paid an invoice, so every time a customer pays you for, for some jobs that you did, so this is for the guys that run their own business, every time you, your invoices get paid, instantly take out 10% and put it into a separate account and take another 10% out for tax time and put it in there. So that way, when you when you come to your, your quarterly BAS statements, your business activity statements, when it comes time to paying GST back to the to the government who love taking our money, make sure you your separate account will make sure that you have that GST money there. Um, then, when it comes to the end of year and you've got to actually pay your your overall financial year tax, you'll have that money in there as well. Then, if you don't end up uh, making as much money and not having to pay as much tax as you thought, what you've got left in there can be your bonus for the end of the year. But that's something I got taught right from the start. And I was doing that for a long time. Then it got a little bit tight, you know, obviously during COVID and stuff. And I started not putting money into the second account and then using a lot of that money that was sitting in the in the business account and almost drawing it up to the to the bottom. And then when it came time to paying GST back or, or doing your bass or paying tax, I didn't have the money there. And it wasn't it took me a long time to get back into putting, you know, 10, 20 percent of every invoice that I get paid back into a separate account and finally getting back into that um, groove of doing it automatically and then having the funds there. So something that a lot of guys probably face is when it comes time to paying your bass not having the funds there because if you've used whatever money you had in your business account and it can go quick you've used it all and then you get your bass statement you got to pay you know four or five six seven grand and you don't have the money then then you start falling behind and it becomes a problem so just something that um you got to keep in mind guys just some business advice there open up a little separate account a separate to your business account as soon as you get paid an invoice from one of your customers take out 20 percent put it straight into that account. So the 10% of it will be for the GST you got to pay back at, at your quarterly BAS statement and the other 10% will be there for when you got to pay your tax at the end of the year. Then you don't have to worry about coming up with those funds. It's already there. And if you do it automatically, you'll get used to not worrying, not needing that 20%. You know what I mean? So hopefully that is good. That's some advice that you guys can take and hopefully um, you use it. What's the best big size hammer for rock? <laughs> I'll do a lot of rock jobs. It depends on your machine, man. It depends what size machine, depends on what size rocks you're breaking. It depends if the rocks are out loose and you're just downsizing or if they're in the ground and you're, and you're breaking down into trenches. It all depends. So um, probably a hard question to answer without that much information. Uh, Tristan's asking, is the cat... 259 a good posse yeah i think it is 
I think a 259 is a good overall posse. That's probably what I reckon would be the ultimate, and that's why I reckon the 255 will be a really, really, really good machine. Um, so for anyone that is uh, a CAT operator already, you can probably comment further, but I think the CAT 259 is a fantastic overall posi track. Uh, we've got NWS Earthworks, Level Up Earth, Moving Next Gen. We've got the Truka Civil. We've got Marchin, Darren, Jen, Payden, Mullen here. We've got Tristan. So we've got a lot of people um, interacting, which is really good to see. Um, in the background, I don't know if you guys can see all this, but I'll spin my camera around a bit. My hat collection is, I'll turn that one that way. The hat collection is growing. So at the Diesel Dirt and Turf, I ended up getting myself a lot of goodies. People were handing stuff out left, right and center. The only bad thing is, a lot of guys were saying, a lot of stall holders were saying that kids come there and just scab everything, so that and um, they were trying to sort of hide stuff so the kids don't take all the all the stock um, before people with actual proper interest are there and and they should be the ones getting getting everything. But kids were like crazy, especially on the, on the Saturday and Sunday at Diesel Dirt and Turf. Um, it, there were a lot of prams, a lot of families around. And the, the kids were going around and just getting gifts galore. So, uh, look, it's good to give out gifts and stuff, but I know it costs a lot of money. Um, getting merch for your business is not cheap. And you sort of want to hope that, you know, giving merch away, you know, is going to attract customers to your business. And if kids are just taking it, I mean, it's good. Those kids might be operators or business owners one day, might need your, might use your services, but it might be a long, long time away. Uh, I think most of them were just using it like, um, like show bags, trying to see what, you know, <laughs> what they could get for the weekend. Um, what else is there? I think um, I might be wrapping it up very shortly, guys. Um, before I go any further, I'm just gonna say what I always say: make sure that you follow me on all my socials. So make sure you follow Earthworks Hub on um, Instagram, TikTok. Make sure you subscribe on um, YouTube. Make sure you follow on Spotify or Apple if you're on Apple Podcast. Um, make sure that you like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Join the Facebook group now. So Earthworks Hub, I've made a face group, Facebook group. Make sure you list your business. So if you want to get more customers, if you want to get more work, list your business on earthworkshub.com.au. And that way everyone can see what services you offer. A lot of guys, I've got to say it again and it keeps happening, people just register. So they sign up as a new um, user, but they don't actually then list their business. It's two steps. So you've got to register first and then you've actually um, got to list your business. So you've got to go in, add listing, put your business details in, um, go to check out, uh, what do you call it, do all, do all the financial stuff there. And then when, when you um, c confirm, then your listing will come up and then people can actually see your business. So when they click on the category, they'll find your business. If they just click on search and and whatever state, your stuff, will, your business will come up. So make sure you do it properly. Go to both stages, steps, register and so register yourself or sign up and add your listing. Um, <laughs> Benji boy, Benji saying he thinks Benji should rep an Earthworks Hub t-shirt, yeah. Well, if you want to rep an Earthworks Hub t-shirt, go to earthworkshub.com.au and you can see a whole bunch of t-shirts there in, in the store. So definitely go in. There's t-shirts in the – there's hundreds of colors. Um, you've got ones with sponsors on the back. You've, now there's hoodies available. I just showed all the guys on here the hoodies that I've got and soon there will be hats coming up. So um, a couple of guys – I've actually got a lot of people buying merch at the moment. So I just noticed, I logged in there the other day and noticed there's a lot of merch being purchased. Um, so that's really good. Thank you to all the guys that have been doing that. But um, yeah, check out the hoodies now. Winter is coming. Um, I'm going to have hats coming up soon. Like I said, I'm struggling to get the logo designed properly for the hats. They apparently need some sort of embroidery um, file. It can't be just a, a regular picture file makes my life hard but um yeah we'll sort that out um what have we got oh tristan one last question i suppose tristan saying what tipper truck do you have at the moment tristan i don't have a tipper i got rid of all my trucks 
Uh, the last tipper I had was my Fuso. So I had a Fuso Shogun, um, 400, whatever it was, horsepower. I can't remember which model it was, but it was the, the higher horsepower one um, with the AA diesel body on it, toolbox on the, on the behind the cab, cab over. Very, very good truck, automatic. My first auto truck that was. Yeah, the Fuso was, was a very, very good truck. Before that, I had um, a Volvo um, uh, NL10, I think it was, no, FL10, sorry, I had a Volvo FL10 cab over, an older one, like 2000 or 1999 or whatever model it was. Um, I had a Mac CH688 um, Elite, which was a very good tipper um, with a Road Ranger in it. Had a little Mazda T4600, which is like a little four-ton tip truck. Uh, and then I had a Hino tray truck with um, an auger set up on the back. So I had all the augers on the rack and stuff. It was That was more like, and like a beaver tail. So we used to use that for all the drilling and stuff. Marchin's going. See you, see you Marchin. Thanks for joining. Make sure you join next week as well. Yeah, that that's a, that's the trucks that I had. had. Um, Tristan is saying, um, oh, another Ivan here. Thank you for joining, Ivan. We've got Long, Long Ridge Contracting as well. Um the Tristan is saying the business he worked for has a Kenworth T404 SAR tipper. Yeah, very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, good trucks. Look, any Kenworth is, is pretty much a good truck. Um I like I like most Kenworths. I like I actually wanted to get myself like a Kenworth and get it all chromed up and this and that, but um I don't know. I don't really have the time to be detailing and doing all this stuff. So and I found that I didn't really need a truck. And because I'm trying to downsize and streamline and focus more on my podcasting and this and now i can't really afford to have a truck anymore so um it's good yeah the kenworth t404 very good good jpg excavations got a question how have you dealt with those one to two day jobs that come up without the truck yeah this is one of my issues jpg very very good question floats um i find that customers are very reluctant to pay for a float back out so they're happy to pay for the float coming in but not for the float going out. So luckily, the the jobs I've had recently, I've had another job to go to. So then I just charge them the float in, and then charge the next customer the float in from that job, if that makes sense. So that's how I've been doing it. Um, or I'll just leave it on their site until the next job comes up. Worst case, if they say to me, "Look, man, you really have to move this machine. It's in the way, and it's been there for a week or two." then I've just had to get it floated back um, either to my yard or to a mate's yard or somewhere until next job. And that's where I'll lose out, yeah, because I've had to pay for the float. However, when I think about it, me having to pay that second float instead of the customer, um, it still works out cheaper than having a tip truck. Like I had my Fuso, brand new Fuso, costing over, over three grand a month. And a lot of times that sat there and I didn't use it because I was doing this sort of stuff. My machines would be just moved and left on site. So I'd use the truck to float it there. Then my truck would just sit at the yard until I finished with the machine and then have to go pick it up. So that one-time float that I get stuck with, I suppose it still works out cheaper than having to own that machine, that truck and all the associated costs with it, you know what I mean, to just sit there and then occasionally use it. Tristan, yeah, see you, mate. Thanks for uh, all your thanks for your interactions, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Yeah, very happy to do that. Um, hopefully, I answered everything for you. Thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, so JPG, hopefully, I answered that question. Yes, it is. Um, not having a truck can make it difficult. So, like I said at the moment, I have to pay. Uh, the customer will pay the flow in. Sometimes they'll pay both ways, um, but a lot of times they'll only want to pay the one way, and then. Um, I just try and leave the machine there until the next job, and worst case, I'll have to float it out if they can't let it sit there. So, um, and then we'll see if it becomes an ongoing issue. I might have to get a truck again, or I might end up getting rid of all the machines um, and just become a contracting operator. You know, so I don't have any of that stuff to worry about while I'm trying to focus on on this uh, social media stuff. Uh, guys, I have to love you and leave you. It is time to finish. Um, I really appreciate all the interactions here. appreciate all the people that um, came up to me at Diesel Dirt and Turf. Like I said, um, the more likes and follows I have, more subscribers, the more people that are um, 
you know, talk, talking to me about stuff and recognize me, shows me that what I'm doing is working um, and makes me want to keep doing more for you. And yeah, if you guys want to sponsor, I'm uh, still looking for sponsors, always happy to, to talk to people about that. I want to be attending a few more events. So if anyone knows of any more events coming up, uh, let me know any sort of expos, whether anywhere in Australia, I'm happy to travel a bit if I have to. There's a couple of big things coming up. Um, I will see um, what other podcasts, I won't say anything at this stage, but there's going to be a few good podcasts coming up and I will talk about the finances. I'll do a feature on that. Um, keep an eye out for new posts this week. So I'm still posting a lot of stuff um, from the Diesel Dirt and Turf Expo and uh, a couple of more machine reviews. Working on the basement still for the rest of this week, so I'll have a bit more basement stuff coming up, updates on my projects and so forth. So, guys, make sure you go and follow everything, socials, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, what do you call it, uh, YouTube, all that stuff. Make sure you follow me, like, follow, all that stuff. Anyway, I won't repeat myself. Guys, thank you very much for joining me today. This will be posted up as a podcast shortly. And um, hope to see you all next week. Have a good week this week. Take care, guys.